Hit it. Hello, welcome to a very special episode of the Combo Fate Podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Raffi. We are real. And I'm here with the Baymax. Hey! And the Astonishing Seth. <gasps> and yeah, this is yeah, this we who are we real. are. Accept us. <laughs> um, for those of you listening on Anchor, Podbean, or whatever, we are recording this just in audio. Uh, this is just in case the video fucks up. But uh, yeah, for, you, for those of you watching us, um, we're doing a live episode. Reason being is because we were gonna go to the Grand State Comic Con and do a live episode. Unfortunately. And, and they denied us. Not because of our, you know, who we are or what we say or the things we do, surely. But uh, because of who we aren't. Yes. Exactly. Wait, legit. Is that why they, they told us? No, was, they, they had too many people put in oh, application okay. forms. I was like, yeah, we, I mean, we can clean this up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, what's cool is that Max here is kind of a veteran video person, because we had done two videos in the past. Yes. I've yes. done one of them. Yeah, were you? Yeah. It was in your grimy-ass basement. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. grimy-ass Now basement. I remember. <laughs> Damn. Now I live in the opposite of a basement, which is the second floor. Uh, the opposite. But yeah, I figured, you know, we didn't get invited to Grand State Comic Con, so I would make it up to you guys by doing a live episode. Um, the, actual episode the actual comic that we were talking about on today's podcast... It's called Ultimatum, and it was written by Jeff Loeb in, I want to say, like, 2006 or 2007. Written by Jeff Loeb and the year 2007. <laughs> the year 2007 wrote this story. They all got together, yes. and they wrote it together. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a little bit, there's a lot of bit of setup. <laughs> so there's a little bit of setup, but it'll take half the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So. Only a little. Ultimatum takes place in the Ultimate Universe. All right, slow down. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Okay. I gotta break this apart. Hold on. Right. Hold on. Hold on. Is another universe? Boy. A little confused. <laughs> so, I don't know if I can trust these guys. In in the late <laughs> nineties, yeah. Marvel was gonna file for bankruptcy because uh-huh. they made a lot of bad decisions. So they hired a guy to help them make good decisions, and one of those decisions was like, you know, <laughs> so they hired someone to help them make good decisions. <laughs> And that included, like, selling movie rights to, to Sony so we can get a Spider-Man movie. Selling Marvel or X-Men rights to Fox. Dumb, 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 dumb. Just like the guy who seemed to be before. See, the worst part is now you can see it play out. <laughs> yeah. And you can just see my face of, like, all right. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. I'll give you a minute. So, I'll give you a hot minute. So a hot sec. Yeah. This is also a thing I do. I put my hands together like this. You can see all the hand motions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. He says he's Puerto Rican. He's actually French. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably. So. Did your mom ever, like, throw chanclet at us? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. no. She didn't throw that around. No? So, no. Okay. So, yeah. The Ultimate Universe was, like, a creation. Because, like, Marvel's big thing was, like, people aren't buying comics because there's a high learning curve. Which is. <laughs> Even true to this day, a lot of people are like, where do I start? There's so much. It's hard to get in. What's in continuity? What is it? Exactly. So, Marvel's idea was starting a new universe that would be like a fresh start. Uh-huh. And it started... like that all was even more confusing. With yeah. all universes, it starts with Spider-Man. Okay. So, Spoopermon. they hired then... Spoopermon. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a really bad Digimon. He sounds, <laughs> he sounds like he's in our Gunman universe. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Spoopermon. Spoopermon. <laughs> I was spoofer. Um, <laughs> so it's like Superman, just like, <laughs> but like kind of like off center. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's a little mm, special ed. Yeah, so <laughs> one of his arms is just noticeably longer <laughs> than the he, other one. <laughs> when he uses his heat vision, he makes an X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> he's like, no, no. it's like starts off with one of them trails. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now they both combine to make a super laser. Yeah, that's true. Southern country Superman, right there. <laughs> Superman. Yeah, come, boy, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm so looking forward to Mark. And Miller's you. To... <laughs> like a chameleon. I can't wait for for fucking Mark Miller's Superman redneck. <laughs> Superman, but he crash landed an egg. He's already in Kansas. Yeah, he, no, no, but he no, when he crash landed, he got really mentally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. No, Superman, he's just like just a little off course, right? Like half a degree off course, and he lands in like the booties in Florida or some shit. Were you dropped on your head when you were little? Yeah, from space. <laughs> he's just like an alligator thief. 
So, Marvel hired uh, then small time creator Brian Michael Bendis, who ironically is writing Superman yeah. now. Um, small time creator. Yeah, Bendis. back when Bendis couldn't break the rules. <laughs> and they were like, Bendis, take Spider Man and do whatever. Do something cool with him. Yeah. All so. Right. So we got a new Spider-Man. Like, I'm going to make him a small black kid. <laughs> a little black kid. I mean, 11 years later, yes. Yeah. Um, but, Miles Morales. But they started in 2000 okay. with Ultimate yeah. Spider-Man. And it was like, what if Spider-Man was a teenager, like, now in the year 2000? Mm -hmm. and it was a very successful run. Spinning off of that, they did other Ultimate books mm -hmm. as, like, a way of being like, hey, people like it when we do, like, new original stuff with our older characters. Let's they, just keep doing this. Yeah. It's almost like how the movies worked mm -hmm. until they got continuity. Um, so, yeah, they, the idea was that they start with Spider-Man, they did Ultimate Fantastic Four, where the difference is, I think they're all, like, in their... a lot of titles. I think in their... <laughs> Not only are they Ultimate, they're Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. I think the idea and was that four. the Fantastic Four, like, and there are, four are in their late teens, mm -hmm. and instead of going to space, they travel to another dimension and get their powers. Okay. Um, then you have Ultimate X-Men, and the difference there was, like, Mutants are born like genetically with powers, right? The the retcon they did there that they reveal later is that later is that the first mutant was created in a lab. Okay. Um and then and then next they did the Ultimates, which was supposed to be Ultimate Avengers, but they mm -hmm. called it the Ultimates. Which was like Mark Miller's like rip on like superheroes. Because Mark Miller also wrote Kick Ass, was which by itself is a deconstruction of the superhero genre. Mm -hmm. So the Ultimates was like it, it's Thor, but he's like an eco terrorist because he wants to he wants to protect Earth, but he doesn't care about the people. Weird. And like, it's uh, it's Iron Weird. Man. Weird. What do you ask? What do you? Oh shit. What do you want from people who worship trees? He's got a point. Um, okay. You know what? You were able to be in shot, and now you're down here. <laughs> you're in a shot. Bye. Yeah. Uh, chance. I thought that was towards me. No, it's like, all right, <laughs> like, all right, all right you know what? <laughs> Bad. Get out, Max. You know what? Just because we fucking worship trees. <laughs> <laughs> then, like, Ultimate Iron Man wasn't its own book, but I'm just saying, like, the differences here. Iron Man is like, because for some of them, it was like, take the one quality that's bad about the character and make it their entire personality. So Iron Man's thing is that he's always drunk, and you can't tell when he's sober or not. I feel he's, like that'd be funny. He's a constructive drunk. No, oh, yeah, he's just a high functioning alcoholic. Yeah, exactly. And like, what's the one quality about Hank Pym everyone hates? That he hit his wife one time in the sixties. So in the Ultimate beater. Universe, he's a wife beater. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's just always wearing a fucking like <laughs> sleeveless white. Still with the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here, Janet. <laughs> Shows up in his gray sweatpants, his white his wife beater <laughs> helmet. <laughs> and then like he's always like dragging her around oh. just to, like fucking <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's go. Alright guys, we need to think of a plan. One fucking second. <laughs> Come here, bitch! How come you don't have a plan already? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that got real. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, it's, it's fucked up, too, because, like... Okay, but now that you're, like, talking about, like, a high-functioning alcoholic... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like, Iron Man, I'm thinking of Rick now. Like, Rick and Morty <laughs> Rick kind of thing. Iron Rick is like... like Rick and Morty... Morty, Morty it's like... So all that right, fucking Peter. little all kid right. in uh, that little kid in uh, Iron Man three. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like all right, all right, Morty, we're going to we're going on adventures. He did just hang out in his garage the entire time too. It was very Rick of him, yes. Um, <laughs> How Rick of you? <laughs> and then like ultimate. <laughs> That's a compliment. Ultimate Hulk is like sexually repressed. So like he chases after Betty, being like, "I'm gonna smash you sexually." <laughs> Oh, let me so smash. Hulk is like a rapist. <laughs> yeah, Hulk is just. Let me He's smash. just an angry rapist. <laughs> is there any fierce, other kind? Fierce rape. No thanks. <laughs> I'll just have water. <laughs> Point is that like we have all these ultimate Jesus books, right? Christ. And they all exist in this universe over here. Yep. And for a while, it worked. Shit gets controversial when I'm here. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and for a while, it worked, and then. What is it? They did Ultimates Volume 1, Ultimates Volume 2, and then Ultimates Volume 3 was written not by Mark Millar, but by Jeff Loeb, okay. who also writes Ultimatum. Yeah. In Ultimates Volume 3, he just, like, just edges up the Ultimates even more. Oh, boy. To where Hawkeye, who has a family, which they use in the movies, um, Hawkeye's family gets murdered in Ultimates 3. Oh. And so he dons, like, a bullseye-esque costume, and he starts using guns instead of bow and arrow. Neat. And he's like, the family's dead. Yeah, the family's 
dead up your turn to punish you. <laughs> I'm Punisher Bulls like Hawkeye right now. <laughs> I'm all these Punisher what is Bullseye my identity? Hawkeye. Punisher Bullseye Hawkeye. That's who I am. That's his entire name. That's my identity. In Volume Three, they also fought against Ultron. You have to say all three names, or else it just yeah. he won't respond to. He won't respond to you. Yeah. You say Haw- Hawkeye, and then he <laughs> doesn't just, answer. You'll, you'll say Bullseye Hawkeye. He won't answer. No. Punisher Bullseye Hawkeye. Punisher Bullseye Hawkeye. What? You just like, you were talking right. to me this whole time. Just, all right, Dick. Like, <laughs> so like, you're like, no, that's Grayson. Yeah. In Volume Three, they fought Ultron. Yeah. And then at the end of Volume Three of the Ultimates, fucking Ultron assassinates the Scarlet Witch. Which is like, on one hand, it's like, oh, that poor character. On the other hand. Well, in this universe, the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were, in, were incestuous, so I can't really be upset about yeah, one of them dying. Okay. Get them out of here. <laughs> Get these <laughs> people out of here. Yeah. Okay. So Scarlet Witch dies. Quicksilver goes to, I think, Magneto. Yep. And to, like, spare him the pain of, like, knowing his sister's dead, Magneto kills Quicksilver. And it's like, in this universe, it's like, you know, we think that they're Magneto's kids. But there's actually a retcon, I think around the same time, where they're actually Wolverine's kids. Oh. Because the retcon was that... I was having hope that they actually weren't, like, incestuous. It, but oh, it's like... Yes. Yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> oh like, cool. they they're not actually related. Oh, my God. Oh, thank that, God. That makes sense. But they're the intent actually, was still there. Yeah. The intent was still there. They they're did, actually they Wolverine's knew. kids. Fuck! They, yeah, <laughs> they still thought they, they, know. they were they doing know it with their brother. They know what they're doing. That made it, like, thrilling for them, apparently. Um, no, the idea was that, like... Magneto had a wife, and they, like, hooked up, and, like, Magneto left for a while. Wolverine came by the house. The wife was like, get inside me. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So they banged. Just mistakes from, like, a fucking, like, <laughs> runway. Just... <laughs> the <laughs> arrows, like, the blinking arrows. <laughs> yeah. So the revelation was that Wolverine's actually their father. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so Scarlet Witch dies, Quicksilver dies, and Magneto who's like driven, he's driven insane by the fact that his kids died. Mm-hmm. And he so, also dies. No. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm so, so hurt. He <laughs> yeah. takes all the iron out of his body and just makes it into a bullet to kill himself. <laughs> I feel like all the iron out of the body. <laughs> what I take out, I put back in. <laughs> oh my in god. One go. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So yeah, Magneto goes crazy and he uses his magnet powers to steal Thor's hammer. Yep. Which is like, in this universe, it's not enchanted. How can, in general, yeah. could Magneto use magnetism to pick up Thor's, Thor's hammer? hammer? No. Thor, really? Thor's hammer has a magic seal on it that makes it so only someone who's worthy can lift it. But which the also, magnetism is lifting it. I know, but it's also magic, so it applies to other universal forces like that. Interesting. Someone asked me if, the, if someone from Star Wars could use the force on the hammer. No. Like, it's literally like it's not just a seal it's like a consciousness where it's like I'm not giving you consent to lift me mm-hmm. so no you're not lifting me <laughs> I'm not giving you consent to lift me you yeah. don't have consent that's my hammer I don't know you listen <laughs> <laughs> listen just because a hammer I don't know you <laughs> just because a hammer can't say no doesn't imply consent yeah. okay so Magneto steals Thor's hammer <coughs> to which Thor's Jesus like Christ. whatever I have another hammer over here <laughs> It's called Stormbreaker. It's cooler. Yeah, it's cooler. You'll it see. It's pretty fucking cool. It's pretty cute. It's an axe. So, <laughs> so he steals Thor's hammer from you in the air, and then Magneto, he causes, I won't tell you how yet, but he causes a tidal wave to hit New York. Mm-hmm. And New York is, like, flooded. And we get to see, like, what everyone's kind of doing. And it kind of affects everyone. Like, like in the Baxter building, the thing from the Fantastic Four is, like, working out. And then a fucking, like, whale just bursts through the, the wall. A fucking whale. Yeah, you know, because whales are on the shore of New York, as we all know. Just a whale shows up. A straight up fucking whale. He's Dude's just, just sitting there. <laughs> all right, well, gotta keep going. And, like, uh... Susan's... No, it's just one of those things where he, like, has his headphones in and he just doesn't fucking hear it. It happens in the background. Just... <laughs> he just keeps going. I gotta finish my riffs. <laughs> and then, like, uh, what is it? <laughs> Susan Storm, the Invisible Woman, tries to use force fields to, like, fight back the water... But she gets a nosebleed and, like, passes out. Don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah. And, like, this is, like, a, around the same time that Reed Richards is going to propose to her. So, like, this happens. Uh-huh. And it's like, oh, isn't that sweet? But in the Ultimate Universe, Reed Richards is kind of, like, like a wimp. Mm-hmm. Like, he 
he's just kind of a, a, a wimp, and you don't respect him. Oh, is he the version that David likes, where he's like, fuck it, join him? Uh, a little bit. He actually okay. ends up becoming a villain down the line. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Um, they also can't find Human Torch, like, he gets swept up in the water. Well, that, I mean, he's like a Pokemon. It's water. He, Damn, he's, 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 he's dead. He's dead, man. It's like a Blastoise fighting a Charizard. Like, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not gonna work for you. It doesn't add up. Which can happen in Pokemon now. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So... Doesn't matter, Polio's still the best. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so, like, I think Spider-Man's on, like, a bus with his friends when the wave hits, and he's kind of just like, oh, shit, I gotta be Spider-Man and save people now. <laughs> um, I'll give you the close second. <laughs> oh, oh, the X-Men. Like, some of them are walking through New York, mm-hmm. and it's, like, uh, Nightcrawler, Beast, Angel, like, a couple of them. I like the idea of Nightcrawler just walking around. <laughs> yeah. I want to see more of Nightcrawler. So does it, like, I... I, well... There's there's stuff out there, but I personally mm-hmm. have not seen enough of Nightcrawler. Yeah, I thought he was really fucking cool. Does he normally have weird fingers and toes, or is that just in the cartoon? Uh, that's in everything. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that makes it even funnier for me of him just walking down the street. I think he's wearing like a disguise. Like he's got like a hat on. And How do you but disguise still, two toes on still, your feet? He's still blue and weird toned. Yeah. yeah. But they're walking through New York when the wave hits. Yeah. And. This is where Jeff Loeb starts the immeasurable kill count of Ultimatum. Oh. I have compiled a list. Immeasurable. <laughs> but I have a list. <laughs> I didn't think that through. <laughs> I'm good with words. I didn't think that through. Yeah. So, it can't be measured, but I'm going to measure it right now. <laughs> right now. With my kill count Right list. now. Right yeah. now. Fortunately, I watched a video on the event that also like had a kill count, so I could record from that. Um, <laughs> so, the wave hits, and like... Angel, who is just Angel, he's not Archangel or anything. Right. He's trying to save. I his, like Angel too. His teammates, because he's a bird. He he's looking for his teammates, and he finds Dazzler uh, dead. Aww. And then he keeps looking. He finds Beast dead. Oh shit! He no finds beast. he finds Nightcrawler dead as well. No. Meanwhile, That's a bird story. meanwhile, all this stuff is happening in New York. Yeah. The tidal wave. <laughs> meanwhile, uh, Angel dies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in Latveria, because oh, no. Doctor Doom isn't any different in the Ultimate Universe, he walks out. Awesome. S- he walks outside. It's actually just the same Doom. Like, <laughs> it's exactly the same. He walks. Out, it's always the same. Dude. There's only one Doctor Doom. He walks outside. Latveria is frozen over. <laughs> Which means the and entire... Then he just goes right back in, and he's just like, I'm not fucking dealing with this. <laughs> he just, just like, walks out. Ah, <laughs> oh, hellfire today. Just like... <laughs> no, so that... Im- they don't confirm it, but it basically implies that the entire country of Latveria is dead. Because they all got frozen to death. Womp, womp. Olaf, man. He has a good kill count. <laughs> so, the, the wave hits, like, uh, Ultimate's Mansion. And, like... What is it? Iron Man pulls Captain America out of the water, and like Cap is like in and out of consciousness because of the the water pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, Bruce Banner is also in New York, and like when the water hit, he turned into the Hulk, and so he's trying to like save people from rub- the, the, the rubble, basically. I thought you were gonna say he was trying to like fucking fight the waves or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck you, waves! I am the Sand Guardian, Guardian of the Sand. Poseidon <laughs> quivers before him. Uh, Did you see that? <laughs> and the wave just slowly creeps up to this kid and he just, fuck off! <laughs> fuck! <laughs> um, just a dude's I am the sad guy. guardian, guardian of the sad. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, we go back to Angel, and Angel goes back to, like, the... Exam- and he's dead. No, he goes back to the Xavier School, which is out of New York, so it doesn't get hit by the water. Yeah. And he tells Professor X, like... All these people are dead in the water cave, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Professor X is dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he goes to, and he doesn't realize that Professor X is like actually just dead. He j- he still looks the same though. No, he's, he's still just he's, not moving. He's good. He's alive. He, he wasn't moving his legs or anything. It just looked like normal uh, Professor X. It's a yeah. good thing the water didn't hit him because he can't very like swim <laughs> out there. So no, uh, Professor X is alive, and, and Angel sees him. And he tells him this, and, and Professor X puts out a psychic signal to um, all mutants to kill. No, to like the Avengers <laughs> and Spider Man, like okay. any hero that'll hear him, okay. to tell him like guys. Oh, the Overwatch initiative. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, he's okay. like guys, it's Magneto. We gotta fuck him up. Yeah, well, kill him. Magneto meanwhile has like a floating like metal island in the sky. As do. As yeah. Do. I mean, to be honest, like if I had the immeasurable power <laughs> that Magneto would have, yeah. I would totally make a floating island. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we cut over to Reed Richards, 
who takes like a jet to Atlantis because mm-hmm. we also have Ultimate Namor. Okay. And Is Ultimate Namor still just like a creepy sex fiend? Yes, uh, he's actually more of a sex fiend in this universe. Oh. Like he yeah, threatened he... to flood New York if Susan Storm wouldn't like kiss him. And look what happened. <laughs> and look what happened. Well, that's what Reed is thinking. <laughs> New York thinking. got flooded. Reed is thinking, like, dude. Fucking Namor. <laughs> Reed is, Fuck. is thinking, like, you literally made a statement that you would flood New York. And Namor was like, I didn't do this. I don't have the power to do it. I was just lying before. <laughs> dude, I just fun. wanted some pussy, man. <laughs> that's what tastes strange. <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I don't know whether to watch Yo Gabba 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 or go out and taste the strength. <laughs> So. Hey, boy with Ike's head, just like, <laughs> oh my god, man. That's so what I want, like, like a dumb ass fuck fuck in the Marvel fuck Universe. Fuck. <laughs> Lick my asshole. <laughs> Mexican <laughs> bitch. bitch. So, <laughs> so, Reed Richards, like, knocks out Namor with a punch, which you, which you would never do, by the way, <laughs> because he can't. Namor's too strong. Mm-hmm. Um, he knocks, He's just like underwater Superman, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Not in the Ultimate Universe, apparently. Yeah. So... Reed takes Namor and he's gonna bring him back to the Baxter building because he doesn't believe Namor. Um, but as he's going, he gets abducted by another ship, mm. and the ship is from Doctor Doom. And he's like, "Shit, it wasn't Namor." And Do- yeah, Doctor Doom's like, "It wasn't Namor, Reed. It was Magneto." And the or X- maybe it was Namor, and this is just some elaborate prank. <laughs> <laughs> like, and like the explanation, prank, bro. <laughs> the explanation they give is that Magneto used his magnetic powers to affect the poles of the earth uh-huh. which doesn't work Magneto's powers affect magnetic fields it has nothing to do with like the north and south pole of the planet but it it does though it doesn't though it, it does though no it's it not magnetism works no it, it's not it's something else okay maybe well, it's like, not the poles do, but it's something but else but like the weird the weird thing is mm-hmm. is like doesn't literally everything that has matter have a magnetic charge yeah, yeah but he, literally everything he affects the poles, but he affects the poles, but they also say he tips the earth on its axis. Oh. Oh, okay. What I'm saying is the so law. If he did that, he's everything the would just die. Right? Just in general. Well, that's the thing. If you like, apparently the only thing that could move the axis is like uh, tectonic plates or something. Okay. But like, he can't affect those. Like the thing is like. I'm not saying he couldn't try and flood New York with magnetic powers if he wanted to, but mm-hmm. the explanation they give... Just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't make sense to his powers, either. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing, too, is that, like... I mean, like, we, we are, uh... Go ahead. So we are talking about a comic book. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we are talking about... I was going to say we are talking about a comic book, but, like, let's just, like, go back to last week's episode that's just, like... Yeah, there are just parts of history that you can't change. There's no reason that we're saying this. There's just you, you can't. There's do that. just parts mm-hmm. that you can't do. And then three dudes show no up. No explanation. And go, you know what? No we're gonna change that part. You just can't do it. The other thing too is that like they try to make it so that yeah, Magneto like, you know, used his powers to shift the tide. Because like the thing is, he shifts the tides, and the tides are, are affected by like the moon. He doesn't move the moon. I, I'm Bro, just, what if he like fucking just? <laughs> I'm just saying there are things he could have done that would be well made sense. Shit. Drop like, the moon on it. Like, again, he has Thor's hammer. Mm-hmm. Thor's hammer can affect the weather. Yeah, why doesn't he just do that? Yeah, why didn't he just do that? But no, they don't do that. Um, so that's That it. would be a pretty cool testament to, like, the strength of Thor as well. Oh, yeah. Like, damn, the hammer can do that. Yeah. Um, Remember so, that this guy wields it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Remember we got a good guy on that shit. Like, yeah. Good thing. Remember a good guy has that power. <laughs> so then, like, uh, what is it? Uh, Iron Man takes Cap to the Triskelion, which is the home base of the Ultimates, like the headquarters of S.H.I.E.L.D. That too. sounds like a fucking shitty Italian restaurant. It, the Triskelion? <laughs> it's, in, uh, it's in Cap. We're America, going to Triskelion's Sol- tonight. <laughs> it's in Cap, which are soldiers. like the place he, ba- he breaks out of to escape. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the shrimp carbonara. <laughs> <laughs> so they go there. <coughs> And uh, we meet Ultimate Carol Danvers, mm-hmm. who's just a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Nothing special about her. Um, Until she gets Captain Marvel. What? No. <laughs> um, but she, they, they go there, and like Cap's like, again, in and out of consciousness. Meanwhile, uh, Thor and Valkyrie, I think they're trying to save people. Uh, Valkyrie, by the way, in the main <clears throat> universe, Valkyrie's just an Asgardian woman. Right? Mm-hmm. She's a badass. In the Ultimate Universe, Valkyrie's just like a human mm-hmm. who's like, 19 and she has a huge crush on Thor so she tries to become a superhero to like impress him mm-hmm. but she has no powers she didn't even pass like in her orange belt <laughs> like she's just some chick who wears like like a bikini model armor and just runs around trying to be a hero 
<laughs> He's gonna look her up. But uh, Thor notices her, senpai, and, um, like, takes her in, and, like, because she's 19, and he's, like, immortal, they, they hook up. And we don't get an explanation, but Valkyrie gets Asgardian powers, I guess from fucking Thor. That not, dick has magic. I guess so. He laid down the hammer, and now she has powers. His hammer controls the weather, his dick controls superpowers. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Go. Yeah, explanation right there. Um, so, happy. so Valkyrie becomes a member of the Ultimates, and, like, Thor's banging buddy. Um, but during the tidal wave, she drowns and dies. And Thor is like, no! And then, because she's a warrior, her soul is taken to Valhalla. So Thor uses the power of Stormbreaker. So like, yes! <laughs> Stor- uh, he uses the power of Stormbreaker to go to Valhalla. And mm-hmm. this is another weird mistake Jeff Loeb makes. Uh, when he gets to Valhalla, uh, Hela is there. Mm-hmm. And Hela, of course, you've seen her in Thor Ragnarok. She, in the comic, she's the lord of the underworld. When you get to Valhalla, Hela's there. And Thor is like, I, I came for the soul of Valkyrie. And she's like, no, you can't have her back. And it's weird because Hela is supposed to be in hell, like yeah. Norse hell, but she's in Valhalla, and they treat it as if it's hell. Um, but Thor goes there, and I think Hela is like, "All right, look, Thor, fight through my endless like army of the undead, and then maybe I'll give you back Valkyrie's soul." So Thor starts fighting the undead, and because Captain America is like flatlining, Cap dies. Mm-hmm. And he goes to Valhalla, and he meets up with Thor, and he's like, "Thor, you fight, <laughs> you fighting the undead? Let's do it!" And so you get the coolest, <laughs> you get the coolest part of Ultimatum, where Cap and Thor fight the undead in the afterlife, for the soul of Valkyrie. That's fucking awesome. It's really cool. Um, but when it's over and they defeat all the minions, Hela's like, "Look, I'll give you back Valkyrie, but I need one of you to stay here. Like, I need a soul." So Thor volunteers to stay. So Cap is brought back to life, and so is Valkyrie, which is like, no, I think you should have brought Thor back, <laughs> just for the problem at hand, you know? <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, so as the floods continue to happen, uh, you have Hank Pym, who's also on the Ultimates still. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea was that, yes, he beat his wife, Cap found out, Cap beat Hank Pym, like, near death, but in Jeff Loeb's Ultimates Volume 3, uh, Hank comes back. He comes back, I think it's Yellow Jacket, and they're like, all right, get back in here. Ah, you scam. Ah, we can't say that. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's more like it's more like a Rihanna situation, because oh. Wasp get, gets back with Hank, and like people are like, hey, didn't he like beat you? And she's like, not in your business. And it's like, oh. All right. Well. It's a gross situation. Okay. I don't want to deal with this. So, yeah. But we could use a shrinking guy, so. So in the wreckage of their <laughs> mansion... Um, well, we do need to cover this superpower. Yeah. In the wreckage of their, their mansion, Hank Pym and, and Hawkeye are looking for the wasp. They wander into the living room, and they find the wasp, but she's being eaten by the blob. Oh. And this is, like, this is one of those images that, like, you might, like, stumble upon if you, like, Google the blob or something. It's one of those things where... <laughs> Both of us pull out our phones. Uh, when I do the video for this, I will be putting in images... Uh, so hold wow, on. Wow, I just typed in blob eating and immediately, immediately it pops wasp. Up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's really bad. Oh, that's fucking gross, dude. Yeah, man. Oh god. We don't know if she was alive or dead, but we know that in Ultimates three, he had said like he was gonna eat her up and he, tastes like chicken. He made true of his word, so he, he eats the wasp. So the wasp is blob dead. like a zombie. No, he's just a cannibal apparently. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, cause he's fat, so he eats people. Ugh. Like all fat dudes do, Seth. You remember that time you and I ate that guy? Because we're fat? It's that. <laughs> so the blob eats the wasp. That's so <clears throat> gross. And it's, it's really fucked up because it's, like, it's not like she was small and he like bit her and like swallowed her. It was like, no, she was human size and he just started eating her stomach. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Talk about t- t- eating out Jesus. to the new level. <laughs> right. Gross. Uh. So the blob eats wasp. And Hank Pym is like, Janet? Janet! Yeah, that's that's like the next picture, is him freaking the fuck out on him. Yeah, so he grows giant, to giant size, and he picks up Blob, and he bites his head off. So Blob is dead. And like, Hawkeye's like... Blob couldn't be moved. Yoink! Yeah. <laughs> and apparently he could be picked up. Yeah. Um, 
So that happens. Um, between issues... <laughs> I like this panel, I'm sorry. It's, it's the panel of him picking up yeah. Blob. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh my god, she was perfect! And fucking Blob is like, hey man, it was nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. I just needed to eat, like... No on. regrets. <laughs> but yeah, so he bites off Blob's head. Um, and then... What is it? So between issues, there was like... Because I think Jeff was aware that people were commenting on the kill count. So between issues, he put like a, a kill count in the actual book at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then in this like dialogue between Professor X and like, I want to say someone else, all these people are mentioned to be dead. So like, what is it? Like, oh, I know what it is. Scarlet Witch talks about how many people have died. And you're like, wait, I thought Scarlet Witch was dead. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. Uh, the characters that have been killed off between issues include um, Emma Frost, Ooh. Sunspot, Cannonball, Polaris, who's Magneto's daughter, by the way, um, Longshot, Forge, Detonator, Hard Drive, and then also Ultimate Daredevil was killed off screen. And by the way, Ultimate Daredevil, first, uh, he's only appeared in cameos in the Ultimate Universe. They, he's on like one of the covers for Ultimatum. They never mention him by name, but you see him dead. It's like, wow, you don't do anything with this character except kill him off. The best thing Ultimate Daredevil is known to do is die. die. Like, wow, thanks for that. Um, also, at the end of the like the first issue, Professor X is like trying to like talk to everyone through telepathy, and Magneto walks into the room, and Professor X is like, "You're killing a lot of people, dude." I thought you were gonna say like Daredevil is just like I can't hear you. I'm blind. No, <laughs> no. I can't hear you. I'm blind. No, Magneto goes to <laughs> Professor X, and and Magneto's like. He says the same shit Magneto always says, where it's like, our people have been oppressed, and this is the only way of finally getting to them, and, and war is the only the only response. And, like, my answer is normal. And Professor X is like, you're no different from, like, the tyrants of the universe, of, of our Earth, like, fucking Genghis Khan, and, like, this person, and this person. And then he's like, and then he compares Magneto to Hitler, which, you know, is a hot button for uh, him. You're like Hitler, except Hitler even cared about Germany or something. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, the, the fucked up part is, like, between is, between like, the Ultimate Universe and the main universe, you could compare Magneto to Hitler because he wants to kill all humans. Yeah, because they're inferior. Um, so he compares. He's, he's older. <laughs> he's like the guy older. that almost killed us. Yeah, like so. Then Magneto walks up to Charles and like snaps his neck. So Professor X is dead too. Oh, see, <laughs> everyone in the Ultimate Universe is dying. I knew Professor X was dead. Left and right, man. <laughs> I knew he was dead. Just. <laughs> You know, he was dead the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> to me, um, he was... Precognition. Yeah. So, like... I slept with a visible woman. <laughs> Looks at <a> Namor. <laughs> Eyebrows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, Terry Devil says that. <laughs> and he's, like, like doing that <laughs> at Namor. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, 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 I had sex with a visible woman. <laughs> at Namor, like... <laughs> oh, okay. It's so weird. Um, so, like... <laughs> So at the Triskelion, the Ultimates are trying to get their shit together. Yeah. And right next to the Swarm Bar. Yeah, yeah. Magneto. You gotta. Magneto also has his Brotherhood of Mutants. Okay. And so like when I talked about Scarlet Witch talking about all the people that died. I gotta say the Brotherhood of Mutants really sounds anti-Semitic. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean it used to be the the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So. Mm. Oh shit, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. They're evil now. They're. Evil. Every villain is, is lemons. lemons. Anyways. So, uh, yeah, he has this Brotherhood of Evil. When I mentioned Scarlet Witch talking about all the people that have died, like, you know Scarlet Witch is dead, so you're like, what is this? Captain she Magma. turns into Mystique. And as Mystique, she's just, like, she's telling all the death counts to Magneto. Uh-huh. And, like, he's like, oh, she's like, oh, you're making a real, like, ass of yourself, aren't you, huh? Like, mocking him. And so he, like, picks her up and chokes her. And he tosses her away and tells her to get back to work or whatever. She was like, oh, yes, daddy. <laughs> and it's Sa- just, what? what? Sabretooth is also what? there no. watching. Um, Sabretooth is also there. <laughs> yep. So anyway. Oh, uh, is Sabretooth dead? No, yeah. he's, he's there. Oh, he is there. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah, dead. Yeah. He's just, he's just, <laughs> just watching. Dead, dead. I mean, no, he's not dead. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, that one of five things you just said is all of my favorites. Hmm. Mm. So, what is it? Um, the list. <laughs> the list. So at the Triskelion... Another member of the Brotherhood of Mutants is uh, Jamie Madrox, the Multiple Man, who has the mutant ability to create copies of himself. And Magneto has the original Multiple Man, like, locked up in his base. Mm-hmm. 
and then he's just using his clones and sending them out and he sends these clones to the Triskelion and they're all wearing suicide bomber jackets so Jeez. all these multiple man clones are just fanning out and blowing up the Triskelion and I think they're in other places huh, I never thought of him that way yeah right you never thought of him that way um I was fucked up. Holy shit. I always thought he'd make the perfect, like, villain in, like, a Deadpool movie where it's like, well, we need goons for Deadpool to kill. Get the guy that can just create mo more of himself. Yeah. We don't have to, like, waste money on more people, you know? Um, we just gotta make doubles of one dude. So and he's just like, we finally kill him. And there's another just one. like, yeah. no, there, that wasn't the real that was, one. That wasn't the real one. That was like, fuck! Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Fuck. And, and, like, there's just, like, a huge pile behind him of the bodies. <laughs> He's just like, fuck, I thought that was it. I only brought enough bullets. <laughs> You're gonna have to share. <laughs> so, like, um, so they're blowing up the dry scallion, and the Ultimates are trying to, like, get out there and do shit. So um, the Ultimates aren't doing pretty well for themselves. No, right? no, we get used to that. So, Hank Pym, <laughs> who's, who's still giant size, yeah. uh, he has Janet's, hey, hey. He has uh, Janet's corpse, and he brings it to Iron Man, he's like, Iron Man, Get her inside and put her in my lab and, and run the program Jocasta. It'll fix everything. Isn't Jocasta the Ultron wife? Yeah. Okay. So assumingly he's going to turn her into a robot, but I don't think we ever see where that goes. A robot. They forget that plot point. <laughs> um, run Jocasta. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on it. Forgets because he's drunk. <laughs> I'm on it. He just, <laughs> like, he just like takes a fucking step and then just... But uh, you just hear like a metal thunk. <laughs> he just he what put, was that? No, no, no. He puts Janet on the table. He just starts like talking to her, even though she's dead, because he's so drunk. The table, and you just hear like, "So how are you doing?" All right. So you and Hank, huh? Uh, I, I did. That. I didn't. I didn't that that would work. To me, yeah. Yeah. Yo, I'm happy for you too. Man, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you know who your issues. Love. Oh, man. I don't know if it's funnier that he could be drunk or he could be so stupid that he doesn't know the difference, you know? <laughs> so, what do you have to uh, say for yourself? Is silent, like, uh, I guess, you know, silence speaks a, th a thousand words. So, <laughs> just... So you hang it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So how you do it? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just imagining, like, Boomhauer from, from King of the Hill in Iron, Iron Man, Man armor. I'll tell you what, I have words for Hey, David. Hey, we got a David now. Hey! You guys are still here? Yeah, we're doing a yeah. we're doing oh, we're doing the recording. Power case. We're doing a recording, man. Yeah. I could have sworn it would have done by now. No, man. Yeah, man. So, anyway. I was thinking of sweet ass time. Anyway. We're almost, we're, we're getting there. So, uh, Hank Pym is like, all right, Janet's dead. I don't, I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. So, he starts picking up all the multiple men suicide bombers. Mm -hmm. He just picks them all up, and he walks out into the ocean, and they all blow up on him. Jesus! So Hank Pym, like, sacrifices himself to kill all these multiple men. And, like, when he dies and he blows up, his skull flies towards the camera, like, of, of the comic. So you're oh just like, God. holy shit, dude! And then, like, the real multiple man is just like, I, I can keep <laughs> I, doing I, this. I could just keep doing this. I don't know what you're wasting your life for, man. <laughs> yeah, like, There's I, not more Pims. Like, I could just do this forever. Um, so, yeah. So Hank Pym dies next, alright? Um... We get this weird cutoff where Spider-Man and the Hulk are trying to help people in New York from the from the big flood, mm -hmm. and Hulk thinks that because there's also an Ultimate Doctor Strange, Ooh. so Hulk thinks like Doctor Strange can help us, and he, and he breaks Doctor Strange's house looking for him, mm -hmm. and Doctor Strange is dead. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. He's just fucking, no. he's just fucking dead. By destroying the Sanctum Sanctorum, Hulk accidentally unleashes Dormammu. So he's here now. Of uh, I was I was just gonna say like, Doctor Strange just like had a brain aneurysm. He was just he just <laughs> fucking died. No, randomly he just died. No, just no. fucking died. He's just fucking dead. Doctor Strange is fucking impossible. Doctor Strange isn't dead. So Dormammu breaks out, and for some reason he's got like a pendant, and in the pendant is the Human Torch. Remember, like, Doctor suddenly, Strange isn't dead. Suddenly he just wound up in there, and Johnny's like, "Help me, Dormammu." Come to bargain. I'll give you a Johnny Blaze. <laughs> I'll give you a nickel and a subway coupon. I'll, I'll give you give one you a Johnny paper Storm. Clip and a I'll coupon. give you a Johnny Blaze for a Johnny Storm. Um, but, but yeah, so Dormammu shows up, and so Doctor Strange has to show up. Yep. And he's like, I'll stop you, Dormammu. And then Dormammu creates mystic lashes that tie up Doctor Strange. Mm hmm. And, and the, he starts choking Doctor Strange with the ribbons. Daddy. 
and in his head, you could look this up too, because it's another like infamous image from this book. Yeah. Darth Strange gets tied up to a point where his, his face turns red, and he's like starting to like spit up pus and, and blood, and his head pops. Oh. So Dormammu just kills Doctor Strange. Easily. <laughs> Which like you wouldn't think makes sense, but Ultimate Doctor Strange is kind of a sham. Uh-huh. What are you doing, cat? The cat's messing with the uh, the tripod. Hang on. Just investigating. All right, yeah. Yeah, don't you just stay off. You find it? No, hold on. You're going to find it, and you're going to be like, whoa. Doctor Strange death ultimatum. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, he gets his head pop like a fucking cherry, man. Um, so Dormammu just, just kills him, and then Dormammu, like, disappears from the rest of the book. I'm looking it up, don't worry. Like, that's yeah. that's the only purpose he served. You're just like, all right, I killed him. Like, like Jeff Loeb, for some reason, is like, you know what? I want to involve Doctor Strange and oh, Dormammu. Oh, it's so gross. Yeah, it's so, like, horrible looking. And it's just like, why is this here? Like, because it's like, none of this has anything to do with Magneto or the tidal waves or yeah. anything. Like, Hulk breaks Doctor Strange's house. Dormammu shows up. Dormammu kills Doctor Strange. Moving on. Yeah, no he's one, just like, oh, I'm done here now. Yeah, no one talks about it. Dora was just gone. He just walks off, and he's gone. He walks off screen, and we never see him again. Oh, man, I have to be careful going through the, the pictures here. Yeah, don't spoil yourself, man. I, I just <laughs> spoiled something big. I can't wait till we get to that part. So, let's see. I bet he's, like, forming the plot by the death list he has. He's just like, all right, now what right, happened next? Like, oh, oh, yeah, this guy died. Oh, I am. <laughs> They're my connecting points. So... Yeah. The Avengers and the X-Men get off their asses and they go to Magneto. Yeah. Sorry, the Ultimates. The Ultimates. And they go to Magneto, they break into his, like, Citadel, and I think Angel goes in first to attack Magneto. Mm-hmm. And he gets a hit on Magneto, but that Sabretooth, like, comes out and pins Just Angel. Killed. He rips off his wings and he kills Angel. Whoa. He, like, rips off his wings and then he, like, cracks his neck. <laughs> so then... <laughs> God damn it, Max. What? You're on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like four, Anyways. fucking 40 years from now when he runs for Senate or something, someone's going to be like, well, you see, we have this video yeah, this guy's of like, you holding a knife. Why guy's you... like, and? Playing with a knife. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, so Angel dies. Playing with a reef blower. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Ultimates <laughs> and the X-Men are kind of like, you <laughs> killed Angel. We're going to stop you. I think Hawkeye shoots an arrow into Sabretooth's eye. It doesn't kill him. Yeah, Sabretooth's just like, dude. He's just like, what the fuck? Takes a move. Sabretooth gets shot. He's like, <laughs> whippers off. Under Magneto's like, oh, it's okay, boy. You did good, boy. <laughs> um, I think meanwhile, like, the Hulk and Colossus are, like, breaking the inside of the Citadel to blow it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but Magneto's like, I did what I had to do. Like, you, you forced me into doing this. Mm-hmm. You, t- you, your world took my kids away from me. And then you all have to pay. So I used made-up science to shift the water and everything. Um, so like, so Wolverine's like, you know what? I'm going to kill you with my claws, <laughs> which are still made of metal, but that's not important. They so heat up in the future. <laughs> so Wolverine uh, stabs Magneto yeah, in the stomach. Yeah, the world <laughs> with science. <laughs> so he stabs Magneto, and Magneto's like, Fuck, you're made out of metal. Fuck off. And he, like, pushes him back. Dude, stop. And then, again, somehow, using magnetism powers, Magneto activates Cyclops' eye beams and activates Iron Man's repulsor blast and aims them both at Wolverine. Which almost kills him. He's like a skeleton with, like, uh, with, like, where are, like, the connecting bits? Like, the ligaments? Yeah. Uh, with those still intact. So, as a skeleton, Wolverine just goes up and stabs Magneto again. <laughs> And was like, God damn it! And so he just, like, obliterates Wolverine with a flash of magnetism, mm-hmm. leaving him, like, the shadow of a skeleton. Ooh. So he's not coming back this time. So he kills Wolverine. Was it like that? Th- that is a skeleton, yes. Well, well, that's not the scene, though? No, that's not the scene. Um, but yeah, he fucking obliterates Wolverine, and then, like, uh... Oh, God. Oh, right, because the side plot was that Dr. May... Doctor Doom and Reed Richards were getting Nick Fury mm-hmm. because Osmond Nick Fury, who's modeled after Sam Jackson and the inspiration for the movie Nick Fury, um, he knows a dark secret about mutants that he wants to tell Magneto, which will stop him. Mm-hmm. So Doctor Doom and Reed get 
Nick Fury and they bring him there. Nick Fury tells uh, Ultimate Jean Grey to like help him. And so Jean Grey uses telepathy to put the knowledge from Nick's head into Magneto's head, right? Mm -hmm. And the knowledge is that the first mutant ever created was created in a lab. Like they aren't like a creation of God. There's no like bigger meaning to what they are. They're all just like lab experiments. Mm -hmm. And that shakes Magneto on like a, a belief yeah. uh, kind of core kind of way. And Magneto's just like, everything I've done is meaningless. There's no greater purpose for me. I'm just, I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what have I done? Like, he instantly regrets what he's done, even though, like, I don't know. I feel like that revelation wouldn't be big enough for him to be like, I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm the asshole. So, he, Cyclops is like, don't worry, Magneto. We can help you. And then he blows uh, Magneto's head off with a laser beam. <laughs> And he kills Magneto. Oh, Jesus Christ. So Magneto's dead. The waves stop. New York starts to recover. I think like six weeks later, or six weeks, yeah, six weeks later, um, there's a big press conference outside of, uh, yeah, that's Magneto getting stabbed. That's it. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> six weeks later, after the tidal waves have ended, um, there's a big press conference at like Washington, D.C., where Cyclops is like giving this speech about mutants. And everyone, of course, because of what Magneto did, is like, fuck mutants even more. Um, and Cyclops is like, guys, we have to all live in peace, and, and we could all do the right thing, and equality, and blah, blah, blah. And then Cyclops is sniped through the head. So Cyclops dies. Then we go back to Latveria, where Dr. Doom is like, man, this whole experience was sure a big thing. Dormammu's still out there. It's out there. It's, we don't He's doing fuck. something. We don't do anything with that character. Uh, he just left. He was like, I killed Doctor Strange, I'm done. He's just like, I win. I he walks win. away. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. This, this whole feud is over. KO. Yep. There's nothing else matters. Literally. I'm taking my Johnny Storm and I'm leaving. So. Oh, yeah, he has Johnny Storm and offended. <laughs> oh, yeah, Johnny Storm is just, just like out. fucking kidnapped. I think, yeah. I think he's, he's just fucking I, gone. I think they save him because he shows up later in like other Fantastic Four books. Anyway, um, so Dr. Doom is hanging out in that very. Wouldn't it be cool if like. He never fucking showed up again. And it's like, where did he go? Oh, yeah, yeah just whatever. fucking Dormammu that carried him away. Dark Lord of All just has him in a little cage. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it. Yeah, I don't know. We so, don't even know where he is. We don't even know. Whatever. We'll replace him with She-Hulk. It's not bullshit. So, we go... Who else is fantastic and <laughs> also fits in the number four? <laughs> we go to Latveria, where Dr. Doom's hanging out, mm -hmm. and, like, his door bursts open, and someone in a cloak comes in, and Doom is like, who are you? How did you get in here? And, like, the guy takes off the cloak and it's the thing. And the thing is, like, Reed told me to do this because he didn't have the stomach to. And Dr. Jim's like, what do you even mean? And <laughs> What even are you? <laughs> and the thing... You're not relevant. The thing takes Dr. Jim and crushes his head and kills him. What? So Dr. Jim's dead now. He just... Picks him up. What? Crushes Dr. Jim's head like a tin can. So Dr. Jim's dead. Doom let the thing get that close to him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Doom is dead. Um, and then the big reveal at the end of the book is that Sabretooth and Mystique are talking to someone about, like, all the stuff that happened, how, like, you know, Magneto's dead and, and all this stuff. And the person they're talking to is Quicksilver. And we're kind of like, but Quicksilver is dead, right? Mm -hmm. And then we find out that he's, like, holding Magneto's helmet, and he's like, good, my father was too weak to lead, like, the mutants into the, into the next generation or whatever. He, he was getting too soft. So we, we orchestrated this plan to make him, like, the target of all the superheroes so that he would die. So that way I, Quicksilver, could take his place. What the fuck? And then we find out that Scarlet Witch is also alive. And that the two of them faked their own assassination so that Magneto would die and they could take over as, like, the leaders of the Brotherhood of Mutants. Okay. And, that, and that's that's where Ultimates ended, apparent, or Ultimatum ended. Apparently this was supposed to be their way of trying to reboot the Ultimate Universe again. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said at the beginning, the problem with most comics for, for a lot of people is like the learning curve, is understanding, like, you know, where do I start, what do I pick up, what's in continuity. And so the Ultimate Universe was supposed to remedy that, but instead it only recreated the problem by having another universe of characters. The only difference was you didn't have to do as much research. Mm -hmm. 
And again, the problem is because it's Jeff Loeb and he, he isn't writing all these books, everything just feels kind of off. Because like, yeah, Ben is writing Superman or Spider-Man over here, and you have you know Mark Millar who wrote the stuff about the Ultimates. Then when Jeff Loeb shows up and does Ultimatum, all the characters don't feel right. Mm -hmm. Some of them feel more like their 616 counterparts because that's the best Jeff Loeb knows of those characters. And him killing off all these characters is supposed to be a way of like, and now we can explore how other characters like react to characters being dead. Like, h how does the universe react to Doctor Strange being dead and not having a mystical protector? Um, how's, how does the X-Men react without Professor X being there? Mm -hmm. But like, in an effort to clean how house... How Cyclops react to having a bullet in his head? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In an effort to... Guess what? <laughs> he dies. He doesn't fucking react. <laughs> He didn't react fast enough. You never react channel yeah. to, to react to the bullet. Um, <laughs> if he was Slipknot, he could have climbed over the bullet. Um, oh. But like... He could have could climbed over Slipknot. In, in an effort to try and like clean house and have a fresh reboot of the Ultimate Universe, all Jeff Loeb did was like just sully it. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't feel like this new cool thing that anyone could enter. It just felt like this like hardcore, uh, needlessly violent, just like, again, th th there was no reason these characters had to die the way they did. Because if a character dies heroically, it's one thing, but if you're Beast or you're long shot and you die off panel because a character, because a writer doesn't know what to do with you anymore, like, that isn't writing, that's, that's, that's laziness. And it's also this thing of like, if the Ultimate Universe was like losing steam and becoming stagnant, why didn't you just find new stories to write about these characters instead of just giving up and killing some of them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, that's basically Ultimatum. Um, there's a lot of tie-ins to the event which don't really matter at the end of the day. Yep. Um, Max, what did you think of Ultimatum? Holy shit. A lot of people died. <laughs> it's a lot of death. Death happened. It was, it was, it was gruesome. You Wh out. Which, which death hit you the hardest, do you think? Which death, like, actually kind of mattered to you? Well, I mean, like, I gotta say, that Doctor Strange death was kind of gross. Yeah. And that, uh, the, the wasp. Oh, uh, wasp being eaten by the blob, yeah. Yeah, that was also kind of gross. Mm -hmm. oh, um, and again, that Doctor Strange one, like, I can see the reason of, like, because if Doctor Strange is gone, that gives you a chance of creating a, a new Sorcerer Supreme and exploring, like, you know, the world is now more targeted by mystical stuff. But do, I don't want that to begin with, like, Doctor Strange's head exploding, you know? Um, Seth, what did you think of Ultimatum? I, it started strong. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I'm into this. Oh, right, cool. And then yeah, it was cool just premise. like... Magneto fights the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, Spider-Man, and the, the Ultimates. Yeah, and then it just slowly turned into, guess what, we're gonna kill this guy next. <laughs> yeah. It got really, like, Game of thrones -y, where it was just like, oh, by the way, everyone's just dying. And it's <laughs> like, okay. Do you like how, like, the... the... I guess I, I don't like when characters die for no reason. Do you like how the tidal waves are changed by Magneto's magnetic powers? And then, for some reason, Latveria freezes over. Yeah. Doesn't, it's just, huh, all right. It doesn't line up. Uh, which she death? She had Thor's hammer. Yeah. She just doesn't use it. Nope. Magnets. Fuck. How do they work? Um, what death kind of hit you the hardest? Wasp. Yeah. It just, I like Wasp. I like Lisa Man Man. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that like... Doctor Doom thing was also surprising. Oh, yeah. Not, not, it, not like getting to me, but it was surprising. Yeah, because it's like Doctor Doom. Mm -hmm. Like he let thing get that close to him. Like yeah, it's one of those things where it's like Doctor Doom dying makes about as much sense as Doctor Strange dying in his position. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like it it does make sense because if Latveria is dead, it's like it, you could do something with Doom. But at the same time, it's like without Latveria, like Doom and Latveria kind of need each other, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if they played it off like as Doom being like, "I'm broken, yes, take me now." Oh yeah type of thing. But they did. But they didn't. It he was just, just like, why are you here, crush? He, she just stood there and took it. Yeah. Just took it. Um, yeah, no, a lot of these deaths just, like, felt wrong. Like, like Magneto killing Professor X, I get that they're enemies, but they're also, like, friends and rivals, and they have, like, this... They're brothers. Yeah, like, they have this, like, uh, what is it, like, this, this battle of ideals, mm -hmm. and the fact that Magneto kills Charles Xavier just kind of proves, like, 
Oh, you just didn't. You just weren't just smart enough to, to act yeah. on that. So you just had him snap his neck. Those two on screen together is always like, it's so interesting mm -hmm. having them because they, they they both solve whatever problem is in front of them, mm -hmm. but from two wildly different like oh, yeah. standpoints. Uh, another death that like just like weirds me out is like. I guess it's not really a death, but like the, the coolest part about Ultimatum is just the, the Cap Thor stuff in the underworld. Yeah, dude. Because you're just like, it nothing matters, there's no story here, it's just fighting fucking undead monsters with Cap and Thor, and it's awesome. Yeah. And that's that's cool. It's rad. But again, like, it, this, this story had a mission that it accomplished in a very destructive way. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why the Ultimate Universe ended up failing, and why... To this day, the Ultimate Universe is still dead, and the only remnants from it is Miles Morales, mm -hmm. who, because he's created by Bendis, is being shelved. Mm -hmm. So, that is Ultimatum. I hope you guys enjoyed the live video. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you again for, for listening to the episode. Um, you can go to panoramapodview.com for all the podcasts we do, panoramablogs.com for everything I write. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're also on many other uh, you, uh, podcasting platforms like Spotify, uh, Anchor, that kind of thing. So... You can look for us and you'll probably find us. Um, again, thank you all for watching and we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Peace. You're going to have to get up and you're going to have to shut the camera off. I know. There he goes. There I go.